let's say that you find yourself on a square, on a green square in a 2D plane. There's a voice that comes from above. Your objective is to maximize the gold because the gold you can get is the gold you keep. All right, all of this is pretty weird. Uh, why are you on a 2D green square and what is this voice? But now the voice continues and says that, hey, there are three rules that you need to keep in mind. And if you follow these rules, I let you keep the gold. All right, first rule, you can move in any direction, up, down, left, or right. Second, once a path is taken, there is no going back. Third, the game ends when no more steps can be taken. All right, so now you're pretty excited. You have the rules in hand and you have the objective of maximizing the amount of gold coins you can get. Of course, you're in a 2D plane, you should get as many gold coins as possible. So what you do is you go ahead and follow the first rule and say that now I want to look in all the four directions. So we'll go ahead and look in all the four directions and we see this. We see that on the bottom square, if we reach and if we go to the bottom square, we'll get two gold coins. On the left, we have one and on the right, we have three. The top cell is a much more interesting cell saying that you will get one gold coin at this point of time. You will get one gold coin when you reach this square and this square happens to be a dead end marked by the bold lines. All right, so now you will ask the question, hey, well, since there is only one way I can go, you know, once a path is taken, there is no going back. Let me just go ahead and select three. You know, I want to maximize the amount of gold I can get. And it looks like, well, perhaps three might lead me to the answer. So what you'll do is you'll go ahead and select three and continue on and on your journey. And at the end, you get three plus one plus seven plus two plus five total gold coins. Hey, looks like a successful run. But is it actually the most optimal? Well, the voice is kind of disappointed right now. So that makes sense that maybe you have the optimal answer and you see the rest of the grid. And hey, we indeed found the optimal answer. We were able to maximize the gold for this particular grid. Now, obviously the voice is kind of disappointed and uh, it does not like this. So what it does is takes you and throws you in another grid. Now we'll do the same computation again. We'll go ahead and look in all the four directions and we see it's a similar kind of setup, mostly because the voice was lazy to change these four squares. But now you'll again realize that, hey, last time I selected greedily. I selected the biggest square that I got. I selected the biggest gold coin value giving cell and I just followed the path. So let me just go ahead and do that again. Let me just greedily pick the highest value and hey, maybe I get optimal answer once again. And so you go on and on and on, but hey, this time the voice was smarter. It only gave you zeros on this path. And now it pulls you back again and says, hey, you know what you missed? If you went to the square at two, if you went bottom, then you would have gotten two plus nine, which is much greater than three. This is an example of the case where thinking in a greedy approach will not work. And so you might ask the question, hey, it worked for the first one, but if it is not going to work optimally for all the possible cases, why do we even need to think about greedy solutions? Why do we need to worry about greedy solutions at all? Well, there are two big reasons why you should worry about it. First, it is asked in interviews. And second, it's a general algorithm that you should know because here's the thing, life gets complicated. And perhaps when you explore every single permutation and combination, you realize that, hey, this was too much effort. And there might be some problems where you can't even explore every single permutation and combination. And greedy in that case comes as a savior because using a greedy algorithm guarantees that you will get a solution. It might be the optimal one. It might not be the optimal one, but at least you'll have a solution. All right, so what we are going to do is over the next 10 videos that I've made, we are going to look at 10 different interview problems, all from interview bit, and we're going to slowly build up our intuitions on how to proceed with greedy algorithm problems. All right, this is it for this video, and I hope to see you very, very soon.